actually brought the screwdriver with you. I always do. Never leave home without it, huh? Never do. Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 1979 Ford F-250. Up front is a 6.6 liter V8 and down below is a three speed automatic transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this year F-250 for a couple of reasons. First of all, I love driving 70s and 80s cars and this fits right in that perfect age range. Second of all, I've never done an F-250 quite like this. This will be the oldest F series I've done. And just overall, it's just cool to be driving something like this. But before I get on to anything else, I have a website, ZachPradle.com, where you can buy stickers like this retro sticker pack or big friggin' bottle sticker, both with free shipping. You could also submit your own vehicle to be reviewed by me through a quick and easy submission form you get a video just like this one and you can read my behind the scenes blog to see what i'm filming before it comes out on the channel but let's get back to that 6.6 liter v8 under the hood well it's known as the 400 and it makes a whopping 195 horsepower this is a gas crisis era vehicle so the emissions were strict and of course this truck has had that removed so this does probably make a little bit more power but from the factory 195 which is so interesting because the first generation Mazda RX-7 debuted this same year and that made 100 horsepower out of a 1.1 liter but the nice thing about these engines is the fact that they're simple to work on they're big lopy throaty lazy V8s but they're easy to find parts for. Now you might be thinking, Zach, those engine options are huge. And yes, that's true, but this was actually before Ford put diesel engines into their lower duty pickup trucks. Not that this is technically a low duty pickup truck, but for civilian models, they were not putting the diesels in there until the 1980s with the IDI and then later the power stroke of the 90s. So this was pre-diesel. If you wanted to pull something, haul something, or push something, you just had to get a bigger gas V8. Bigger was better back in that day, which is an interesting little piece of Ford truck history. Like I said, paired to it is a three-speed automatic. It's known as the C6 automatic transmission and it has something called select shift basically what this means is that if you decide to put it into first or second gear it will stay in that gear it won't shift out of it which is nice for plowing or pulling things or if you're stuck in the mud of course not all automatic transmissions in this era had that ability so select shift was actually a very nice feature last but not least of course this is four-wheel drive and it does have a dana front axle swap from an F350 as well as it does have an added leaf spring in the back from an F350 that's why on the side you will see it has F350 badges on it that was done by the previous owner because technically this has all of the stuff to make it an F350 but it's not actually an F350 with that out of the way let's talk about the interior well in front of me I have a bunch of gauges on the left is the oil pressure and fuel in the center is the speedometer and on the right is the battery voltage or alternator current really and coolant temperature. I do have two warning lights for fasten seat belts and brakes and that's it. On the steering wheel, I don't get anything. It's a really clean, thin, simple steering wheel and it does the job. To the left of me, I do have lights and my wipers. However, you can see this little logo in square. This is normally where an air conditioned truck would have the air conditioning vent. This truck was never originally equipped with air conditioning. So those vents are blocked off. Down below all that, I do have Western vehicle lights. So this was a factory option for the F-250. This truck was optioned originally with a plow on the front. And so this was installed for those plow lights. Down on the floor, I do have my brights. So older vehicles had the high beam switch actually mounted on the floor. Just a fun little 70s car thing. On the door, well, I just have my crank for the window and my latch to get in and out. That's it. However, something nice is that I do get this little smoker's window. So on a rainy day or something, if I want to keep the big window closed, I can open up this little pizza slice window and get some fresh air. Moving into the center, I do have my climate controls, of course, for my heat. But like I said, this was not an AC optioned truck. That's why I have the windows open today. I apologize for the sound quality, but super, super basic off or high 
temperature and the frost and that's it. You don't get to pick where it's sent. You don't get to say, oh, my head's warm, but my feet, no. Heat on or off, make up your mind. Then I do have an aftermarket radio, and yes, this actually is aftermarket. You notice that it does say aux on it. This does have aux inputs, which is really, really cool for a car from the 70s. Retrofit that still looks the part. Then I do have an ashtray and 12 volt outlet. And off to the right, I do have a glove box that says custom. When you ordered your own F250, it would come as a custom because you ordered it, but it's not like a Pimp My Ride special or anything. Hi, my microphone cut out for a couple of times, so you're gonna have to deal with voiceover Zach, but here are the four-wheel drive settings for the Ford F-250 from 1979. Obviously, you have four high, two high, and four low, as well as neutral in the center. You also do get lockers. They have to get out and twist, but very, very nice four-wheel drive options. And of course, with that being said, there are no cup holders in the 1979 Ford F-250, so it fails the big friggin' bottle test. One more thing I do want to note was the smell inside of the F-250. It actually really reminded me of old photographs from the 1960s and 70s. I don't know what that smell is, but it was very, very nostalgic while driving this truck. The seat, and I say yes, seat, because it is all one giant bench, has no markings on it, no designs on it. It's almost as if this was plucked out of a school bus. However, it is adjustable. You can move it forward and back. However, that's it for your inputs for this seat. Not many adjustments. Now, of course, we don't have back seats, but we'll hop around back and we'll talk about the bed real quick. All right, so we're on the back of the F-250 from 1979, and this bed is as basic as it comes. There is no type of tie down or any sort of help for securing things in the bed, but it is a bed and it works. I just think that's hilarious. I'll do a quick walk around here of the bed. Nothing to write home about. Don't even know what to talk about right now, but uh, here it is in case you were curious. Now we gotta talk about the looks and that's one of the things that really drew me towards this truck. This is such a truck's truck. This, when I think of like farm trucks, this is what comes to mind. I love the square bodiness of it. Now this is the last year of this body style technically. However, this actually has the tailgate from a 1980s F-250. It actually just works. I just, I overall love this look. But now let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think driving this pickup truck? Now you might be thinking that as a 24 year old, I hate this thing. It doesn't have AC, has the ride quality of an obsidian brick, and it doesn't have Apple CarPlay. But you'd be wrong in that assumption. I really truly love this truck. And the reason for it is because I identify with this truck quite a bit. This truck is big, it's brawny, and it's straight to the point. Like I said earlier with those bigger displacement V8s when you wanted to tow or haul, this truck works harder not smarter. If you wanted to pull something, bigger engine, more gas, that's what you needed. I'm very much that same way. I've been using Adobe Photoshop for about 15 years. And just this very year, 2022, I learned how to use hotkeys. If you're familiar with Adobe Photoshop, you're probably scratching at your monitor right now. When I wanna copy an image and put it onto a new document in, in Adobe Photoshop, I go up to the toolbar, hit select all, edit, copy, file, new, edit, paste. That's how I do things. I learn a way to do something and then just learn how to do that way faster. I don't spend time learning the easy way or trying to figure out the easy way. That's just the way I am. And that's the way this truck is. This truck doesn't look for an easy way out. This truck has been pushing snow and hauling trailers for longer than I've been alive. Almost twice as long as I've been alive. This truck doesn't take the easy road. It takes the certain road. Yeah, are parts of it overkill? Sure, but it gets the job done and it starts every morning. Ted drives this truck as a daily driver. It's a workhorse. It's always been a workhorse. It was originally optioned as a workhorse and it'll fight tooth and nail till the bitter, bitter end, which knowing these F-Series pickup trucks isn't going to be anytime soon. What this truck lacks in brains, it makes up for in brawn, and boy does it have a lot of brawn. It ain't pretty, but if there was ever a truck to unsink the Titanic, <laughs> this is it, baby.
I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Ted for letting me take out his 79 F250. This is such a cool experience driving something that has just been a workhorse and been the backbone of America for somehow coming up on 50 years. I don't know how the 70s are almost 50 years ago, but hey, huge thank you to Ted for letting me take this thing out. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys have owned this generation of F-Series pickup truck, please leave a comment. I wanna hear your stories. I wanna hear what kind of connection you might have to these, cause I'm sure you have one. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.